All right, awesome, here we go. So 4.2.5, scientific notation. Uh, we have an I can statement. Can I get a volunteer to read our I can? If you wanna read it, use a little raise hand button. Oh, you guys are gonna make me be the bad guy and pick. All right, I think that Damari wants to read the I can statement today. I can convert between scientific notation and standard form. Thank you so much, Damari. So yeah, we are actually gonna practice two skills. Um, and one of them I think is a little bit trickier than the other. The first skill is going from scientific notation to the actual number. And this seems to be the one that people um, have practiced the most. And then the other one is going from the number back to scientific notation. And both are 2.0 skills. You need to know how to do both to be successful on our FAs. All right, here we go. So we have some examples and some non-examples. I just wanna brainstorm real quick. Um, and you don't have to write this down. We are just brainstorming here. So in our non-examples, there are some things that these people have done wrong. I wanna know if you guys can spot those incorrect things. So I'll give everybody a moment. When you think you see something wrong, use a little raise hand button so I know. So here are good things. These are things that we like. These are things that they have done wrong. I wanna see if you guys can spot those errors. When you think you see one, use a little raise hand button. When you think you see a mistake in these non-examples, there are three different examples here. Something that they have done wrong in scientific notation. Cool, Brianna, you think you see something? What do you see? I think we're typing it. The last one, yeah, we have way too many zeros over here. There's something funky going on. Um, we could have fixed this a couple ways. So either the person just like didn't finish the problem or this exponent is wrong. Um, but at the end of the day, we shouldn't have all these zeros in front here. Um, what we like to see is one number before and one number after the decimal point ideally. And then that would change this value for us. Um, which means that this one is kind of the same mistake. Instead of 85.2, we should have had 8.52, and then that would have changed it to times 10, and we would have changed our exponent here, and we'll talk about what we would have changed that exponent to in a moment. Uh, and then we have one more mistake. Who sees our mistake in the middle? Who sees our mistake in the middle here? Ah, uh, look again. It's more obvious than you think. It's hiding in plain sight. Oh, Brianna, again, you think you see it? Not quite, Evelyn. Ah! How about just this part? What's wrong with this? <laughs> Look at this one versus all of our other ones. <laughs> now Evelyn sees it. What do you see, Evelyn? It should be a 10, yeah. So in that middle one, we always wanna remember that we are not multiplying by some other number. We're, already, we're always multiplying with a base of 10. Awesome. So um, those are what scientific, 
So our top is what scientific notation should look like. Those are two examples that are good. Um, those three that we pointed out, those are examples or ones that are bad. So uh, if you are on the Jamboard, we are moving to frame four. Let's go through our rules really quickly. So we have two major rules. Um, first thing is, as we saw with our non-examples, we want the decimal to be placed between two non-zero numbers, ideally. Um, but at the very least, it needs to be just behind the first non-zero number. And then we also want to multiply it by a base of 10. Can't have nines in there. And there are two types of exponents you're going to see. Now, if you are writing this down, this bottom part is super important. So please, please, please make sure you get this part with me. Oh, Brianna, you have a question. Yeah, go for it. Sorry. Um, it has to be 10 because, let's think about it. If we have uh, 100 and we multiply it by 10, what that's going to do is that's going to give us 1,000. So we've kind of like created a new place for our decimal point to move. So this 10 is what allows us to move our decimal point. Does that sort of make sense, Brianna? Awesome. Yeah, if we just multiplied it by nine, it would only be 900. We haven't added, an, we haven't multiplied enough to get to that new digit. Cool. All right. So we have two major rules. Again, if you are writing this down, make sure, make sure, make sure you get this next part with me. Um, and you guys will be asked to upload this to your digital notebook. So it's just good practice to follow along with me as well. So our negative exponent, this is going to represent a really small number. So uh, something less than one, a decimal value, um, anything that just looks really tiny. And our rule, if we have a negative exponent, we're going to move our decimal point to the left. And this is if we're converting from scientific notation to standard form. So if we're going from that scientific notation to a regular number, this is the rule we're following. All right, so that's our example with a negative exponent, which means positive exponent is basically the opposite. So if we see a positive exponent with our 10, we are dealing with a big number. So millions, trillions, billions, or just a hundred something. Anything larger than one. And then we are going to move to the right. All right, I'll give everybody about 15 seconds here. When you are ready to move on, if you could put ready in the chat, that would be awesome. Or if you have any questions, now is also a good time. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you, Gabrielle. When you are ready, you're putting ready in the chat. So I know I can go on to our first example. I just want to make sure everybody had an opportunity to write down these two rules. I'm still waiting on a response from Damari, Bailey, Connor, Finn. Are we still working? Are we ready to move on? Thank you, Connor. Thank you, Finn. All right, I think I got the majority of us now. So I'm gonna move on to our first example. If you're on the Jamboard, I am now on frame five. Um, now I know this is gonna be kind of tiny for you. So I will write these a little bit larger so we can see hopefully. In that first example, we have 4.2 times 10 to the fourth. In that second example, we have 2.18 times 10 to the negative eighth. All right, so let's start with this first example. In our first one, our exponent is positive. 
So if our exponent is positive, can you guys tell me in the chat, am I moving to the left or to the right? Yeah, we are moving to the right. Oh, and it moved all my stuff. What is going on? So let's do just that. I'm going to write my original number. And this exponent with our 10 tells us how many times to move and the, uh, which way we're moving. So since it's positive, we're moving right. And since it's four, that means we're moving four spaces. And I know that a lot of us feel really silly doing the loops. They help you. Just do them. It's helpful. If you try to do it in your head, you'll probably make a silly mistake. So here we go. We're going to start at this decimal point, And I'm going to move right. One, two, three, four. I put my new decimal point there. And what do I fill in in those loops, everybody? Zeros. Yep. Killed it. All right. Going to fill in my zeros. So you should have three zeros. Common mistake is people go, oh, there's a four here. That means four zeros. Uh-uh. Four is how many times we're moving. All right. Now, I do want to ask you guys to rewrite your final answer so it looks nice and pretty. Right now, it doesn't. So our final answer here, after we've moved our decimal point, we no longer write the original one. And we just have our three zeros after. And you could put the decimal point here. It just looks kind of weird. So if it's at the very end, you don't need to write that. All right. That was our first example. I'm going to move on to our second example again. Make sure you are tuning in because you will have to do this yourself in a moment. And if at any point you have a question, use the little raise hand button so I know. All right. Uh, next, if the exponent is negative, which it is here, then we are moving the decimal point. Instead of right, we're moving left now this time. So I've written my problem a little bit bigger down here just so you guys could see what I was doing. Um, I'm going to write my 2.18. And we are moving to the left this time. So start at my original decimal point, And I'm going to move left eight times because that's what my exponent tells me to do. So I'm going to move left one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't know why I made the loops that big. I just did. <laughs> and now I'm going to fill those all in with zeros. And last but not least, I'm going to rewrite my answer so it looks nice and pretty. So I have, now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zeros. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two, one, eight. I have my decimal point out front. You'll notice I didn't use my old decimal point anymore. We moved it. Um, what should I put in front here, though, in my final answer? I don't like leaving that blank. What should I put there? Yeah, I'm going to put a zero there as well. So if there's nothing in front of your decimal point, you're adding a zero there just to make sure it's in good notation. All right, I need a scale of 1 to 10. How are we feeling? 1 being... What did you just do? 10 being, I'm good. Keep going, Miss Carr. Oh, also, if you have a question, now's a good time. Got a couple 10s and 8s. Where are the rest of us at? You want to do another example? Do you want a positive or a negative example? Or does it matter? Negative example. You got it. All right. So I'm going to move on to frame six. I just added this one. I'm just going to come up with it on the fly here. Let's say I have 5.6. Times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay. Um, because this is negative, I know two things. I know first thing that my answer should look like a really small number because it's a negative exponent. I also know that I'm going to move my decimal point to the left. Okay. So I'm going to start with my 5.63. And then this tells me how many times I move to the left since it's negative five. I'm going to move left five places. 
So here we go. Take my decimal point and I go one, two, three, four, five. And I put my new decimal point where I ended. And then all of those spots get filled in with zeros. And uh, when I'm writing my final answer, because we don't want to leave all the loops and the two decimal points in there, um, I don't write this. I don't write uh, my original decimal point anymore. I only write the new one. And then because it looks weird having just a decimal point out front, we want to add another zero if there is nothing in front of the decimal point. Does that make you feel a little bit better, Brianna? Or do you still have another question? All right. Sometimes practice makes perfect. So let's have everybody just try it. Um, I'm going to go on to this next frame. Uh, there are three questions here. So I'm on frame seven. I want everybody to give it their best shot. I want you to pick two of those three. And I will be calling on people. So please, please, please make sure that you are prepared. I don't want to have to write your name down on a paper. Okay. Um, so try two of those three examples. Be ready. I'll play some music for you guys while you are waiting. You have about 15 more seconds. You're trying two of those. All right. Um, let's hear from... Bailey, can you give me one problem and one of your answers? And then, uh, Caitlin, can you give me one of your problems and one of those answers? Just put like, if you want to do number two, put two and then the answer. So Bailey, give me one. Caitlin, give me one. Okay, Caitlin, you're doing three. What was your answer for three? Yeah, awesome job. You should have gotten 0 0.0072. Nice. We moved it to the left three spots. Bailey, do you have an answer for me? Uh-oh. Going once. Going twice. All right. Uh, Damari, what about you? Damari, can you give me an answer for one of these? We've already done number three, so you can pick from number one or number two. Um, would it be, I'm gonna try one. Would it be six? It's four, and then six. Four, two. Mm-hmm. Point. 
it be four zeros or no? Not four zeros. Remember, that means four. we're moving it four times. So how many zeros would I have there? Three. Or two. What? Look how many I loops we got. Three. How many? I don't know. I'm confused. We moved it four times, meaning that the first time I moved it, it filled the two filled the spot, but then I still had three open spaces. So we should have three zeros at the end. I said that the first time. Oh, I didn't hear you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so we should have three zeros at the end. Thank you, Damari. My bad. Um, Finn, you raised your hand. Did you want to give me an answer for number two? Or did you have a question? Oh, okay. Fair enough. All right. I think you guys got the gist of it. Um, let's go the other way. So here's where I lose some people. Um, scientific notation has two things you can do. First, we can take scientific notation and change it to our regular numbers, our standard form, which is what we just did. Um, but we can also take these big or really small numbers and change them into scientific notation. And this is where... Um, People probably struggle a little bit more. It's the same idea. Um, the only danger, I don't want you to think left and right anymore. I want you to think, is it a big number or is it a small number? Okay, so get left and right out of your brain. We're just thinking big and small. So here we go. Our exponent or our number right here, I'll write it a little bit bigger. It's so small. We have 62,000, and there's a comma in there, but you don't really need the comma if you don't want, if that's confusing you. Okay, now 62,000 is a really big number. That's greater than one, so this is a big number, meaning that our exponent, do we think it's going to be positive or negative, guys? If we have a really big number. Yes, absolutely. We are going to have a positive exponent. And all we do is we, so here's kind of how it works. You take where your original decimal point was, you put where you want your decimal point to be, and then you count how many times you'd have to move to get there. And that's going to be your exponent. So in 62,000, our original decimal point, it doesn't look like we have one. Um, but where would our decimal point be here? Any ideas? Doesn't look like I have one. Any ideas of where our decimal point technically is? A little bit hidden. Yes, after the last zero. Good job at the very end. So that's where my decimal point is currently. We need to pick our goal decimal point. And remember, the goal decimal point should be after the first non-zero number. So that means I want it to be between the six and the two. So now all I have to do is bridge the gap between those dots. I have to count how many times I'd have to move to get there. So I'd have to move one, two, three, four times, that means my answer here would be 6.2 times 10 to the fourth. All right, awesome. Let's look at a really small number now. So this time we have a really small number, which means that our exponent is going to be negative. And I'm going to write this a little bit bigger. Again, it's so tiny. We have 0 0.0000672. Um, raise your hand if you know where our goal decimal point should be, where I want to put my decimal point in scientific notation. Thank you, Caitlin. Yeah, I want to put it between the six and the seven. Good. After our first non-zero number. So my goal, I want to put it here. So then we just need to count. I'm going to move it one, two, three, four, 
five. And again, because we started with a really small number, even though we moved to the right this time, we don't care about right and left when we're changing it to scientific notation. Um, because it was a really small number, we're going to have a negative exponent. So I would have 6.72 times 10 to the negative fifth. All right, questions, concerns? Oh, Evelyn, I didn't even see you put that in the chat as well. Good job. Questions? All right, we're moving on to the Jamboard. There is, we're on frame nine now. I want everybody to try two of these problems, um, and we will go from there. Two problems. I'm going to give you about a minute. You are converting from these regular numbers into scientific notation. So think whether they're really big or really small, and then count how many times you have to move. Remember, if it starts as a really big number, you're going to have a positive exponent. If it starts as a really small number, you're going to have a negative exponent. All right, um, can I get one answer from Connor? I don't care which one, just tell me which problem you're doing. And then one answer from Evelyn. I don't care which one you're doing, just let me know. Evelyn, you're doing number three. Okay, so what did you get for number three? And then Connor, you're doing number four, awesome. Four point seven two times ten to the negative six. Perfect. Because we'd have to move it one, two, three, four, five, six times, and it was a really small number. Cool. Um, Connor, you wanted to do number four. What'd you get? Oh. 1.54 times 10 to the negative third. Also perfect. I moved it three times. It was after our first non-zero number, and it was a really small number. Uh, do I have a volunteer that did a one, either one or two, one of these uh, positive exponent ones? Yeah, Caitlin. Which problem are you doing? And then you can tell me your answer. You can either throw it in the chat or mute yourself, whatever's easiest for you. Uh, okay, for number one, we got 2.4 times 10 to the seventh. Let's double check. We started here. We moved one, two, three, four, five, six, 
Seven. Perfect. Awesome job, everybody. I think you got it. Um, so let's take a look at what we're doing now. I want to remind everybody to upload their notes. So um, I'm going to put this on your screen. It's our reminder to upload this to your digital notebook. I'm going to give everybody about, well, we don't have a whole lot of time, so about a minute or so. Um, and your digital notebook, this should go in the spot for 4.2.5. And when you pull this up in Google Classroom, 4.2.5 is the learning target that you're taking a picture of your notes and you'll, you're uploading it. Give you, like I said, about a minute. Got my dancing cat timer.